this video I will explain how I built a digital divider head for milling spur gears. Gears are normally made in the home shop by using a mechanical divider head and a vertical mill. The gear blank is placed in the chuck and by using a special dividing plate with a rotation handle you can divide one rotation of the gear blank in certain amount of angle steps to match the number of teeth in the gear. A mill with a special gear cutting tool bit will mill a slot in the gear blank. By rotating the handle a certain amount based on the holes in the divider plate, the gear blank is rotated one precise step and the next slot is milled. The handle is rotated again and the next slot is milled and so on. After one full rotation of the gear blank, the gear is finished. In my setup I have made a digital divider head using a DC motor attached to a multi-stage planetary gear reduction box with a 278 to 1 reduction ratio. I got this assembly from our local industrial scrapyard. I added a 500 pulse per turn incremental rotary encoder to the motor, which together with the 278 to 1 gear reduction gives 139,000 pulses per rotation of the output shaft. This is sufficient resolution for cutting gears. I have used an Arduino with an LCD display for setting the teeth number, counting pulses and controlling the motor. The gear reduction box output shaft holds the gear blank. A metal plate with a metal bar is mounted to the gear housing so it can be fixed to my lathe tool post. To eliminate the output shaft backlash I added a simple preload to the output shaft by means of a rope and a bungee cord. Because the gearbox output shaft is only supported by a single bearing, I added a reinforcement structure to the output shaft. By means of the handle, the output shaft can be clamped and secured during the gear cutting. The whole assembly is mounted on my home built lathe mill combination. The mill holds the gear cutting tool and I'm using the cross slide adjustment to set the cutting depth and use the carriage to move the mill cutter through the work. Here you see the key components of the digital divider. An Arduino Nano, an L298N motor driver, a 24 volt DC motor with the large gear reduction box, a 500 pulse per turn encoder which is mounted on the motor shaft and a 16 character 2 row iSCSI controlled LCD display. The schematic is shown below. The Arduino Nano drives the L298N motor driver via PWM signals. The Arduino also counts the pulses from the encoder which is mounted on the motor shaft. All information is shown on the LCD display and by means of push buttons you can select the parameters and enter the different menus. Here you can see the motor driver test setup with an Arduino experimenter board connected to the motor driver and encoder, which I used to write and test the program. Let's take a closer look at the Arduino program. Here you can see the system block diagram again. The user can input the gear teeth number data via the push buttons and the Arduino sends the user information via I2C to the LCD display. The Arduino sends the PWM signal to the motor driver and the driver can rotate the motor clockwise or counterclockwise with fixed speed. The incremental or quadrature encoder sends two signals A and B to the Arduino input pins. One pin serves as the interrupt and by checking the face of the encoder signals the Arduino will count up or down. When the measured number of counts equals the counts needed for one gear tooth division, the motor stops. The Arduino program has one main loop, which checks which menu is active. There are totally seven menus, each having a specific function. In the background, an interrupt routine is continuously checking whether there are pulses from the rotary encoder, and then it will increase or decrease the counter. Menu 1 is the startup menu with default number of teeth for the gear. The user can use the up and down buttons to increase or decrease the number of teeth and then press enter for going to the next menu. Menu 2 
will calculate the number of pulses for one gear tooth division and show this on the LCD. Pressing enter brings you to the next menu. Menu 3 is the main user menu for gear cutting. It will calculate the pulse count for the next gear tooth, show the current pulse count value, calculate the pulse count error value and let the user advance to the next or go back to the previous gear tooth. Menu 4 is where the PWM for the motor drive is generated. The control method is a simple forward stop backward stop method. This method works quite well when applying relatively low voltage PWM drive to the motor. Since the encoder resolution is high and the motor commutation is rather coarse, it is not really possible to achieve the exact required encoder counts. So I set an acceptance window of plus minus 5 pulses around the target pulse value. When the motor has reached the target position, the program returns to menu 3. Menu 5 will be active after the output shaft has made one full turn. The output shaft will then need to do a full rotation back to zero to rewind the preload rope. Menu 6 is a manual motor control menu. It can be used to set the output shaft in a precise position for fixing the gear holder shaft. Menu 7 is the reset menu to reset all values to default, normally used when something went wrong or when starting with a new gear. To understand the encoder up and down counting, let's take a closer look at the rotary encoder signals A and B. They have a plus 90 degree phase shift when the encoder is turned clockwise and a minus 90 degrees phase shift when the encoder is turned counterclockwise. My program interrupt will be triggered when the encoder signal A shows a rising edge. Then it looks at the logic level of signal B to determine whether to count up or down. As you can see, in clockwise direction signal B is low when signal A has a rising edge. In this case the program counts down. In counterclockwise direction signal B is high when signal A shows the rising edge and in this case the program counts up. It is a very simple way to achieve up and down counting from a quadrature encoder, but it has some drawbacks as we will see later in this video. One of the issues that needs to be addressed is the backlash of the output shaft. To show this backlash I mounted a large disc and a long pointer to the shaft. When I push the shaft it moves a bit and won't return to zero. When I let the software drive the motor 10 degrees forward and 10 degrees backwards, the pointer also does not reach zero, because the gearbox has some backlash. This backlash can cause irregular gear teeth distance. By adding a preload to the output shaft, the backlash can be overcome. My preload system consists of a rope that is wound around the output shaft. The other side of the rope is pulled by a bungee cord and this will result in a force on the output shaft in one direction. Let's first make the guide wheel from brass. Then I mill a slot in the front plate for the guide wheel and drill the hole for the guide wheel shaft. Here I mount the bungee bracket. Now we can assemble the front plate Connect the rope to the shaft, add the bungee, and tie the rope to the bungee cord. After some bungee stretching, we can now test the system. When the shaft is turning, the rope is wound around the shaft and the bungee cord stretches some more. Pushing the shaft will always bring the pointer to zero and a 10 degree movement forward and back will also end at zero again. Let's do a full test. The program starts default with 15 teeth. In this example I select a gear with 10 teeth. The bottom shows the required total pulse count at the left and the actual pulse count at the right. After one tenth movement, 
you can see that the actual pulse count is very close to the target value. Only an error of 4 pulses, which is around 0.01 degree error. Now we can go to the next teeth and so on, until we reach the full turn. After this we need to rewind the rope, so the program will turn the shaft backward one complete rotation. The control box is made from 4mm red anodized aluminium, which I also got from the scrapyard. The rectangle for the LCD display is milled. And then I mill the recess for the display front plate. The result looks quite nice. For wiring the Arduino pins to the connectors, I used perf board and isolated transformer wire for the connections. The LCD is mounted with four screws to the front plate. Now we can glue the front plate plastic cover. And place the Arduino PCB in the control box. Then add the motor driver PCB. Connect the PWM, supply and motor wires. The PCBs are fixed with screws and plastic nuts. Now we can connect the encoder connector. And connect the front panel connectors. The top plate is fixed with M2 bolts. The long output shaft is only supported by the gearbox bearing, so it needs some extra support. Let's make the aluminium sleeve that fits over the output shaft. First turning the outside diameter. Then turning the inside diameter, parting it off, and cutting the slot for the preload rope. Now we need to make the metal plate that can grab and hold the shaft end. To cut an accurate hole in the steel plate, I mounted the plate with a bolt and some glue onto a round fixture that can fit in my lathe chuck. Now I use a small milling tool that I made from a 48 volt DC motor, which can be fixed onto the tool holder. After squaring the mill bit to the plate, it is quite easy and fast to mill an accurate hole in the plate. Checking the size, it is a nice fit and we are almost there. Now we can remove the plate from the fixture and deburr the hole. Now the plate needs to be cut to the correct size. Then some milling to make the sides accurate and clean. Here I'm drilling and tapping the hole for the tightening handle. And finally drilling the holes that will fix the plate to the front of the aluminium sleeve. Now we can assemble the pieces and check the gripping action, which works quite well. We can now mount it to the motor and gearbox assembly. You can see that the preload rope fits well in the slot of the sleeve. It's time to make some gears. Module 1 is a common size for small gears, so I bought some Module 1 gear cutting tools. Here is a number 6 which can be used for gears from 35 to 54 teeth. 
I made a tool holder for it that can be mounted in my vertical mill. Here are some simple formulas for making gears based on the module unit. M is the module size and Z is the number of teeth. All sizes are in millimeters. The gear outside diameter is the module times the number of teeth plus 2. So for module 1 gears, the outside diameter is the number of teeth plus 2 in millimeters. A module 1 gear with 46 teeth will have an outside diameter of 48 millimeters. The tooth depth is the module times 2.25. So when cutting the module 1 gear, the tooth cutting depth needs to be set at 2.25 mm. For calculating the distance between two gears, the pitch diameter is handy. This is the circle that defines the gear meshing. Pitch diameter is simply the module times the number of teeth. For the first test, I'm making a module 1 gear with 46 teeth out of aluminium. So we first need to cut the gear blank outside diameter to 48 mm. I added a 28 mm gear hub for fixing the gear. The borehole is drilled to 7.5 mm and I used an 8 mm reamer for final size. Then the four holes are drilled in the gear hub, fixing the lathe chuck at 90 degree positions and using the mill to drill the holes. Now we can part it off and tap the M4 thread for the set screws. Checking the dimension again and then it can be fixed to the gear blank holder that I made for this test. Now we can mount the divider assembly to the lathe tool post. The control box is fixed with velcro to the mill backplate. The 12 volt supply is taken from the mill power supply 12 volt output. I use the manual motor control to set the divider output shaft in the position for mounting the gear holder. The gear holder can be fixed to the output shaft with three set screws. I'm using the lathe chuck and parallels to adjust the tool post so the gear is square to the mill. Here I'm also checking the vertical alignment, which looks good. Now we need to set the mill cutting tool in the center of the gear. For the gear tooth cutting depth, I adjust the cross slide to let the gear outer surface touch the cutting tool. Then I zero the cross slide caliper. Now we can set the tooth cutting depth to 2.25 mm. Time for cutting. I set the number of gear teeth to 46 and let the divider go to the first tooth position. Then I fix the gear with the handle. The mill is running at 600 rpm and I am slowly cutting towards the gear. Then advance to the second tooth and repeat. Then the third tooth, and the next, and the next. The cutting goes smooth and quick. But when looking at the display during gear cutting, I saw that the actual pulse count is changing when the gear cutting tool goes through the aluminium. This should not happen and it must be investigated. We are now at the last tooth and after that I let the gear rotate one full turn back to zero to rewind the bungee cord. Now we can remove the gear and have a look at the result. At first glance it looks okay, but when taking a closer look 
you can see that the gear teeth thickness is not always the same. The last tooth is clearly thicker than the rest. I connected my oscilloscope to the encoder outputs A and B. Here you see the normal waveform when the motor is turning. Signals A and B are showing the correct phase shift. But during the gear cutting, where the encoder signal should be idle, signal A shows erratic pulses, while signal B does not show any pulses. I found that the encoder is sensitive to vibrations and will send erratic pulses when you knock on it. This is why the pulse counting value was changing during the cutting and it will cause errors in the gear tooth positions. This issue is caused by my simple up and down counting method. For quadrature encoders normally more elaborate decoding is used that will check for changing signals of both encoder signals A and B. In my program I kept the encoder counting up and down as before, but to solve this issue I added a condition that up and down counting is disabled in menu 3 where the gear cutting and vibrations are happening. I made a new gear using the modified program. After this change the pulse count value does not change anymore during cutting. The result now looks good. All gear teeth have equal distance and thickness. With this setup I am now able to make all kinds of gears. As a first project I made a 58 teeth gear from aluminium to replace the plastic gear of my lathe cross slide movement. The aluminium gear is more robust and the operation is very smooth. I hope you like this video. You can also make digital divider heads by using stepper motors which don't suffer from the backlash issue. But I found this DC motor with a large gearbox and with some tricks the divider function is quite ok. I have posted the CAD files, schematics, component links and the Arduino program on my website. Please see the link in the description below for more information. Thanks for watching.